In UTD, we have a saying that is, breathing is for buoyancy. The fact that it keeps you alive is just an added benefit. Now we say this a little bit jokingly, of course, but what we mean by it, that we have to think of our breathing as a way of controlling our balance underwater, our buoyancy. Our buoyancy control comes from our lungs and not from our equipment. So let's dive into why breathing is for buoyancy. Yesterday evening I was teaching an open water class and it inspired me to make this little video because we had a long talk with the students uh, about breathing. And in the first pool session, or the second pool session in this case, we, uh, we, we make them experiment with themselves underwater how breathing affects their buoyancy. And we do this by letting them swim in the pool while the equipment floats on the surface and they're just breathing off the long hose. Um, so basically the only thing they can do is control the buoyancy with their breathing. So if you look at this girl here, she's just learning it and she's just getting the hang of, okay, when I breathe out, I go down, but then when I take a too deep a breath in, poop, she pops right back up to the surface. And of course we work with this and we make them realize that certain pauses in your breathing is actually necessary. So holding your breath while diving won't kill you. Yes, it will kill you when you hold your breath and swim to the surface. Yes, don't do that. Don't do that. But pauses in your breathing and changes in the way you breathe actually are necessary. If you go black and white and say, never, ever, ever hold your breath while scuba diving, most important rule of all, it's a bit like saying, never, ever, ever hold your handlebars on your bike steady, because then you'll fall over. What I mean by this, if you weld your handlebars on your bike to the frame, will you be able to keep balance? No, right? Because you'll be able to need, you'll need to move that bike underneath you and, and balance yourself on top of the bike. Together, you can keep balance and, and stay upright. So, is that the same in saying, always move your handlebars? Because if I taught my four-year-old daughter to, drive, to, to, to ride a bike like that, never ever stop moving your handlebars, she'll never ever learn to drive her bike bike and it's a bit like that in diving if we go too black and white and say never ever hold your breath and then leave it with that it's very difficult for students to grasp the fact that our breathing is our way of controlling our buoyancy underwater because we all know if we breathe out we sink but do we sink right away no there's a little delay and this is the key my ladies and gentlemen, this is the key. If you now look at this same girl here, she's now progressed a little bit and she's now swimming underwater at maybe one meter 20, but she's not on the bottom and she's not on the surface. And this is the first time she has a regulator in her mouth, right? This is maybe after 10 minutes of practicing at the, at the poolside. So the take home from this is, if you're new to diving and you haven't practiced this, and even if you're a very experienced diver and you haven't practiced this, start by going in the pool. See if you can just jump in the pool, breathe out in, in bathing suits, not, no mask, no fins, no, no nothing. Bathing suits, breathe out, let yourself sink to the bottom of the pool. The shallow end, the deep end, doesn't matter. See if you can go in the deep end and, and practice it there. But that'll actually teach your body to accept that your, your breathing still continues even if you're not actively breathing in and out. Your body doesn't stop functioning. So what a lot of these students um, struggle with in the beginning, and a lot of divers struggle with in the beginning when they just learn to dive, is as soon as they breathe out, they want to breathe in again. But then it's like steering a boat, right? If you steer the boat and steer right back again, it doesn't move. 
because it needs time. In water everything is a bit slower so we need time to move away that water around us so we can actually start sinking. So when we breathe out, we pause, hold our breath and then we start sinking and then we can breathe in again. But if we take a full gasp of air, boop, we're back at the surface. So we need to learn to play with our breathing a little bit. So now look at these girls now. They're swimming completely in control around the swimming pool. And here it's too deep to stand up, but they're still swimming in control. And look at this girl. She's almost at the surface, but she breathes out and she sinks back down again. And this is the reaction we're looking for. After bloody 15 minutes in the swimming pool, they get the concept of breathing is for buoyancy. Now, the next time we take them in the pool, we put a suit on and we'll explain that the suit gives you positive buoyancy. You have to offset that with weights and to try with a weight belt, and the same exact skill. And then we do the math and subtract the weight of the equipment underwater from the weight belt put all together and they're swimming around like professionals. And this is also a good exercise for you out there. Go, in, go into the water and see if you can swim around in your suit like this. Just add weight to compensate for the positive buoyancy of your suit and see if you can control your buoyancy with breathing. So holding your breath is dangerous. Yes, if you ascend, holding your breath in pauses to adjust your buoyancy it's no problem, it's actually necessary. A little tip though, why do we breathe in? What triggers the signal in our brain to actually breathe in? And that is carbon dioxide buildup, right? If you breathe in, oxygen gets transported to your muscles, your muscles metabolize the oxygen, and the byproduct is CO2. The CO2 sends a signal to your brain, hey, we need fresh air, breathe out and breathe in again. Now that process doesn't stop if you hold your breath. So actually as soon as you stop breathing in, carbon dioxide levels start to rise. So if you are practicing these skills and breathe out very very slowly, obviously you're decreasing your positive buoyancy, but because you're not breathing in, your carbon dioxide levels start to rise. So you've just breathed out. Now you have a complete um, empty lungs and a low level of carbon dioxide. Now you stop breathing in. So you're breathing out and you're not breathing in. So your carbon dioxide levels rise. You're breathing out, you're breathing out, you're breathing out. Your carbon dioxide levels rise. And you're maybe halfway down your exhalation and your carbon dioxide levels are already up here. Because remember, that doesn't stop just because you're breathing slower or faster. That actually works in exactly the same way. So if you're breathing out slowly, you might realize that you feel the need to breathe in again before the actually buoyancy differences, buoyancy changes has taken effect. So instead, breathe out a little bit sharper, and then let your body react to the buoyancy change before the CO2 level rises too high that you feel the need to breathe. These exercises are also done by freedivers where they actually practice you know, the threshold of when the CO2 level hits and, and how they can, can push that limit. But it helps us as scuba divers also. So if you breathe out slowly, you might not get the full benefit and you might not be able to reach the deep end of the pool. But breathe out all you have in one go, completely from the bottom. Use the, the breathing from your belly, not from your chest. <sighs> completely empty. And you'll start sinking. With a little practice, you sink like a rock. I hope you liked this video. Remember to share and like uh, down here. Uh, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And otherwise, keep practicing out there and we'll see you underwater. Bye-bye.